Welcome to this episode of OpenSCAD uh, DIY 3D Tech. In this episode, we're going to take a look at um, 3D modeling uh, adapters to connect the vacuum hoses to these two top uh, in inlets and, and outlet ports. So in the last episode, we took a look at building the flanges for the bottom, both laser cutting and CNCing. In this episode, we're going to take a look at these flanges and, or the, these openings and how we build adapters. So now I've got a, a one and a half inch hose that I use for my vacuum systems that connects to the CNC. It's a, it's a smaller unit and, and I run uh, some rigid uh, one half inch PVC pipe to a high velocity shop vac. And again, that's why I'm building this, is, is to keep the filter from being plugged up. But what happens is the, the hoses don't fit onto these. So what we're going to do is model these in, in OpenSCAD and create some STL models that will adapt the hose to fit these. And again, what I want to show here is how you can use OpenSCAD in actually pretty simple sense to create a, a fairly complicated object in simple sense. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you go into, if you use something like Tinkercad or Fusion 360, you can do a similar type of activity. Um, however, uh, with, with OpenSCAD, one of the things I'm going to show you is, is with the cylinder object, you can, you can shape it uh, in, in a way that's, that's empirical. In other words, it, it, you know mathematically what the open size is and what the end size is. Now, you can do similar in other programs, but I find that doing this programmatically is, is a lot more accurate and actually a bit easier. So we're going to take a look at that today, and that's going to be sort of the main gist is to show you how that all works. So let's head over to the computer and take a look at it. Welcome to this episode of OpenSCAD. In this episode, we're going to be taking a quick look at building a flange adapter. And what we've done is uh, we, we did this for part of a dust collector build I'm doing over on DIY3DTech.com. So if you're interested in that, hop over there, take a look, and you can kind of see how this comes together. But just kind of wanted to do a brief video on this and, and again, kind of show. So we're jumping here back more so to the 3D realm because a lot of that we've been doing with the dust collector project is showing how we can jump over to the laser cutter or the CNC machine so this is just not a tool for um, 3D printing but for this one we're going to jump back and this this is a pretty basic build so I just kind of want to cover some of the highlights and again one of the things is we've been focusing on making it parametric so what we do is we really have two pieces of this structure a bottom piece or a base piece and we have a top structure which is really the hose piece so the idea is is this bottom piece will connect to the cyclone dust collector here and this top piece will integrate with a hose or another type of coupling mechanism so we need to adapt these two sizes together and this is what we've done here and one of the things that I have decided to do is make this parametric and also programmatic in the fact of I always need adapters so uh, this will be a handy little file to just jump to and, and punch in a few numbers and get an adapter out so because again you can see here we can set inlet which is this top remember the inlets the top portion so we can set the OD over here as well as the whoops sorry ID which is the inner diameter I'll get that right and then the OD is the outer diameter and then so we can also set uh, base height as well as uh, hose depth so how far do we want this to stick into the hose I really haven't added a function and maybe I'll throw one in to, to adjust the base. Uh, oh, no, I do have base height, sorry. Uh, so I think I've got all the critical pieces, and then I've also got wall thickness, and so I can set the size of the walls. Um, and so when, when I did print this, I printed it with 1.3 millimeter shells. So basically, that's going to be 2.6 uh millimeter of shell and out of the five and then i printed it at 50 percent infill so it, it came out to be a pretty solid object and i was very happy with the way these printed and one of the things i'll put the printing of it uh, in the upper corner because the other piece i did i want to kind of talk about it is while i designed it in this perspective i actually flipped it in cura and printed it like this and because uh the pieces this does have a flat area and i did want to get supports on it because it does have a bit of an overhang and uh, 
I, since this piece is going to go into a coupler, this bottom piece here, the hose inlet, and you're not going to see it, I really wasn't too concerned and I could sand it to fit if I needed to. And so having nerds on it or whatever left over from um, uh, supports wasn't a big issue where the base piece was exposed and I wanted to, uh, you know, to be pretty, pretty clean looking. So... Uh, and I also did not want the inside here, which is going to be a very tight fit onto the base, to have any nerds or whatever left over from uh, supports, which I could have printed this way and just had supports here. So, uh, so some of the logic. And this is when you're designing your parts, something to think about is supports and that in printing. And how will you actually print it? Print it. Now, I designed it this way just for ease of use and all the time in my mind knowing it would be printed this way but it was just easier to think of it in this uh, three-dimensional space anyway um, the other piece I wanted to kind of talk about is this this ledge here so I thought about rounding this ledge because if this was just going to terminate into uh, some sort of just blunt end connector I would have used a cylinder and turned it into a cone however what I'm going to do is use a one and a half inch coupler to go over this hose ID and then it's going to bump up to this and I'm actually going to epoxy it to this hose piece and to this for structural rigidity so I purposely designed this to be uh, a flat surface so it would mate with the 1.5 inch hose coupler so just the uh, kind of some history on that the the overall design isn't that complex now I do overlay these a little bit and uh, as you can see here I'm translating it down by a millimeter so I'm leaving a millimeter of overlap you know so I get a solid watertight manifold uh, in this space um, so just kind of a little bit of piece there and you could adjust that now one of the things that that I did is I left it uh, you know FN equals 60 I should have probably bumped that up and I may make that actually a setting uh, a peer a parametric setting in the future but the eh, 60 worked out just fine um, I tend to to work with 60 just sort of a sidebar is I tend to work with 60 or maybe even a little bit lower just rendering speed the machine that you're watching right now is a six core I think three gig processor with tons of memory so it doesn't have have a big problem but when I'm working on a laptop or something I like to keep the facets down um, so the rendering isn't isn't really overloading the machine and then when I go to print I usually like to pop that up to a hundred because I do like nice circles but in this case it worked out fine um, outside of that there's not too much and, and again I will have put up the um, uh, in the upper corner up here you'll probably have seen uh, parts of the uh, printing of this the time lapse of it printing out on the one how so it actually came out pretty good so if you find yourself in the need of an adapter this this is a pretty good template to follow to create that or simply go ahead and use this as your template and make modifications as needed so hopefully you found this interesting so please give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel uh, again I'll be putting out content on a regular basis I do a lot of design work in open SCAD and the idea is is I'm going to be sharing not so much you know how do you do cylinders or squares or that kind of stuff but really how do you utilize it in your workflow to create a product and also sort of the diversity of open SCAD you know it's just not for 3d printing so you see me do a lot of laser and CNC stuff with it too so um, if you have laser and CNC friends that that are interested uh, by all means uh, like and share with them so uh, anyways cheers see you in the next video